All right. Okay. So, so uh, I uh, we are on problem sheet number nineteen. So we have this questions pending. Um, after we complete this question, then we will move on to the next topic, which is functions, linear functions. Okay. Um, so that is that uh, we will be going to a new set of uh, ideas. So let's finish this first. So did you guys try this questions? Did you guys try these questions? How many were you able to solve? How many how many questions were you able to solve? We are we are talking about problem sheet number nineteen. How many questions were you able to solve? Can you give me an idea? Most of them. Okay, cool. Okay, please listen carefully. These kind of questions, the word problems, are very common in NSAT. So let's see this question. So we have a fire extinguisher that should be pressurized to 162.5 psi, but it is acceptable for the pressure to differ from this value by at most 12.5 psi. The range of acceptable pressure is. So there is something called an acceptable value of pressure. And there is an ideal value of pressure. That should be 162.5. So this is a fixed number. This is the ideal value we are looking for. But the acceptable value is what we need to find. So let's call this P. If I call this acceptable value of pressure as P, the ideal value is 162.5. Okay. Now it says that the difference between these two is at most. What is the meaning of at most? At most says it means the maximum. The maximum. Okay. So the question simply says the difference between the acceptable pressure and the Ideal value of the pressure should be a maximum of 12.5. Is that clear? The maximum value of difference between these two quantities. What are the two quantities? The ideal value that we are looking for. But it will not be ideal always. So there will be a variation. And the variation is nothing but the deviation. There's nothing but the difference between the actual value and the um, the ideal value, the accepted value and the ideal value. Okay. This can be a maximum of 12.5. Now, the question is, when you take the difference between, so we have the difference between, difference between acceptable value and acceptable values is P is what we call as P. And the ideal value, ideal value is 162.5. Is a maximum. So it has to be less than or equal to 12.5. The maximum value of the difference is 12.5. The maximum value of the difference is 12.5. So the number has to be 12.5 or less than 12.5. If I say something has a maximum value of 12.5, it means that the thing has to be 12.5 or less than 12.5. So that's the idea. Now, here is the catch. When we take difference between P and uh, 162.5, P and 162.5, we are going to take the absolute difference. Okay, we are going to take the absolute difference. Okay, because you know the acceptable value can be greater than this 162.5 or it can be less than 162.5. Okay, so the absolute value of P and 162.5 should be less than or equal to 12.5. So that is the idea here. So this is the idea here. Got it? So when we have something like mod x 
less than or equal to three. We have seen that in the previous class, it's minus three less than or equal to x less than or equal to three. So in this case, we have P minus 162.5 will lie between minus 12.5 and 12.5. P minus 162.5 will lie between 12.5 and minus 12.5. So I'm going to add, I'm going to do it in one single step. Okay, one single step, what will I do? I'm going to add 162.5 everywhere. Add 162.5 everywhere. Now what happens? So this quantity becomes P. And this becomes 175, and this quantity becomes 150. This quantity becomes 150. Now your p value has to be between 150 and 175. Okay, so that's the idea. So if your p value is between 150 and 175, between 150 and 175, I'll just see this on number line. There is 150 here. And there is 175 here. And in the middle, there is 162.5. And this difference is 12.5. And this difference is again 12.5. So your number can be, your p value can be anywhere between 150 and 175. So p, p value is here. So when you take the difference between the actual value of p and the ideal value of p, the, the acceptable value of P and the ideal value of P, this difference is less than 12.5 because you know the maximum is 12.5 in this direction and this is 12.5 in this direction. So if I take any P value in between 150 and 175, if you take any value between 150 and 175, say for example, you take 170, 170, your acceptable value is 162.5. And the difference comes out as 7.5, 7.5. But when you say difference, we are going to take the bigger value minus smaller value. So bigger minus smaller. So we are always talking about the absolute value of the difference. Okay, that is why we took an absolute value here, right? When we say difference between these two, in this specific case, we are looking at the absolute value of the difference. Okay, and now another example will be say uh, if we have say 151, one value is taken here as 151. Now we have to take 162.5 minus 151, and this comes out as 11.5. See, again, that is within the accepted range. That is within the accepted range. The error, error value or the deviation has to be less than or equal to 12.5. Hope this is clear. So when you see a question that is uh, a word problem that describes a real world scenario, you should be able to model that using, so in this case, it is using inequalities and then solve that inequality. So that's the idea here. So these are typical uh, SAT questions. Uh, another question. The solution set of the inequality, the solution set of the inequality Modulus of x minus 6 plus 9 greater than 2 is. So how do we do this? Modulus of x minus 6 plus 9 is greater than 2. So this means that modulus of x minus 6 is greater than minus 7. So idea. Hello, am I audible? Hello. Yeah, it, it's working now. It's working now. Okay, okay. Somebody else was using an AirPods, so it got connected to this device. So that what? That's what. Okay. So the second question, uh, the solution set of the inequality, uh, you have an absolute value expression. You have to isolate that. 
you have to isolate just like you do it in an equation and you have modulus of x minus x greater than minus x. Now look at this expression. They are saying that there's some quantity is greater than minus 7. Modulus of some quantity is greater than minus 7. What does it even mean? Modulus of x minus 6 is greater than minus 7. It simply means that this is true for all values. If you take any real value and you subtract 6 from that, you're still going to get a real number. Take any real number and you subtract 6 from that, you're still going to get a real number. And you take the absolute value. Okay. You take the absolute value. You take the absolute value. That has to be a positive number. Right. Now, if somebody is telling you that this number is always greater than minus 7, this is true for all real numbers. So, that is the idea here. So, the solution set is all real numbers. Does that make sense? I mean, this is slightly tricky because, you know, if there is nothing to do in this case, you just have to observe that uh, when somebody is telling you that modulus of x, mi x minus 6 is uh, greater than minus 7, is true for all real numbers. Got it? Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Uh, is it okay now? Is it okay? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So uh, that's fine, right? Question number two. Question number two, the solution set is array numbers. Now, next question, the solution set of the uh, inequality modulus of y plus 12. So again, the idea is you isolate this absolute value expression. This becomes minus 6 minus plus 5. So you have modulus of y plus 12 less than or equal to minus 1. Again, see this, the absolute value expression modulus of y plus 12 cannot be less than or equal to minus 1. It can never be less than or equal to minus 1. It can never be less than or equal to minus 1. So the solution set is no value of y. No value of y. Cool. No value of y is the solution set. Yeah, next question. The solution set of modulus of x minus 5 less than 5. Modulus of x minus 5 is less than 5 is modulus of x minus 5 less than 5 is. Again, you know, if somebody is telling you that modulus of x is less than 3, the solution is minus 3 less than x less than 3. So in this case, instead of x, we have x minus 5. So modulus of x minus 5 is less than 5 means your x minus 5 has to lie between minus 5 and 5. You add 5 everywhere. You add 5 everywhere. So, we have x is between, okay, I'll write that step as well. You, you add a 5 everywhere, plus 5, plus 5, plus 5. So, 0 less than x less than 10. 0 less than x less than 10 is the solution. Is that okay? Is that okay?
Yes. The next question is the smallest positive integer satisfying modulus of 3 minus 4x is greater than or equal to 9. So we have modulus of 3 minus 4x. The absolute value of 3 minus 4x is greater than or equal to 9. So if, if we have something like this, modulus of x is greater than or equal to 9, it simply means that your x is greater than or equal to 9 or your x is less than or equal to 9. This is okay, right? Absolute value of number is greater than or equal to 9. So it means that the number has to be greater than 9. That is one possibility. Another possibility is your number is less than minus 9. Say, for example, minus 10, minus 11, minus 12. Okay. But if you take the absolute value, the magnitude, it will be greater than 9. Okay. So this simply means that the number will lie towards the right side of 9 or towards the left side of minus 9. Towards the right side of 9, you take any number, the magnitude will be greater than 9. So towards the left side of minus 9, you take any number, the magnitude will be greater than or equal to 9. So there are two sets satisfying this condition. One set is x greater than or equal to 9. Another set is x less than or equal to minus 9. Is that okay? Now with that information, we have 3 minus 4x is greater than or equal to 9 or 3 minus 4x is less than or equal to 9. 3 minus 4x is greater than or equal to 9 or 3 minus 4x is less than or equal to 9. So we have two inequalities, but they are two different sets of numbers because they are connected by R. R. So we have the union of two sets. So let us simplify this. So 3 minus 4x is greater than or equal to 9. So we have, um, you can take 4x to this side. We have 4x greater than or equal to 3 minus 9 is minus 6. So your x is less than or equal to minus 6 by 4, which is minus 3 by 2. Your x is less than or equal to minus 3 by 2 in this case. Your x is less than or equal to minus 3 by 2 in this case. In the second case, we have 3 minus 9 less than or equal to 4x. Sorry, we have uh, 3 minus 4x less than or equal to minus 9. Okay, I have made a mistake here. 3 minus 4x less than or equal to minus 9. There was a mistake here. I have corrected it. 3 minus 4x less than or equal to minus 9. So we have... 4x greater than or equal to 12. So your x is greater than or equal to 3. That's x is greater than or equal to 3. And the final solution set is going to be x less than or equal to minus 3 by 2 or x is greater than or equal to 3. So on the number line, we have 0 here, we have 3 here. We have minus 3 by 2 here. This is one set of numbers. And this is another set of numbers. Now question is, the smallest positive integer. The smallest positive integer. So the positive here, these are all negative numbers. These are positive numbers here. And we have 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. included in the Solution set. And the smallest positive number is going to be 3 in this case, right? 3 is the smallest positive integer that is included in the solution set. Okay. Is that okay? Yes, next question is, next question is, the set of values of k for which the inequality has no solution. So there is an inequality, but there is an unknown value of k. We are not asked to find the solutions of x. 
we are asked to find the value of k so that the uh, the inequality has no solution in x we have to find the value of k so that the inequality has no solution remember this is not a question to find the values of x the set of values of x this is not a question to find the solution of x in fact they have given a question and there is an unknown parameter included k included in the question we have to find the value of k in such a way that the inequality has no solution so how will that happen how will that happen so first of all let's try to uh, isolate the absolute value sign so we have modulus of x is less than k minus 1 Now you know that a modulus inequality will not have a solution if we have something like this mod x is less than zero, or if we if we have mod x is less than minus one, mod x is less than minus five. Why? Because mod x cannot be less than zero. Modulus of x can never be less than zero. So when I write mod x is less than zero. It has no solution. Similarly, if I have mod x is less than minus one, it has no solution. If I have mod x less than minus five, it has no solution. Is that point clear? Is this plot point clear to everyone? When I write mod x is less than zero, mod x is less than minus one, mod x is less than minus one, there is no solution to the inequality. Is that clear? These examples. Because you know, absolute value can never be negative. Absolute value can never be negative. So, if somebody is telling you mod x is less than zero, that doesn't make sense. Similarly, if somebody is telling you mod x is less than minus one, doesn't make sense. Mod x is less than minus one, it doesn't make sense. Okay. Now, coming back to this question, mod x is less than k minus one. So, obviously, when k minus one is zero. When k minus one is zero, this means mod x is less than zero, so there is no solution. Okay, not just zero. K minus one can be zero or any negative number, right? Suppose a k minus one is some negative number. K minus one is some negative number. So mod x is less than. Some negative number. In this case, also there is no solution because you know mod x can never be a negative number. It can never be less than a negative number. Got it? So if k minus one is equal to zero, there is no solution. If k minus one is a negative number, there is no solution. K minus one is a negative number. There is no solution. K minus one is zero. There is no solution. So k minus one has to be zero or less than zero. K minus one has to be zero or less than zero. So our solution, I mean, the answer is k minus one will be less than or equal to zero. That is, k is less than one. k is less than or equal to one is the answer. K less than or equal to one is the answer. Now you can verify the answer. Verify the answer. How? Put some number satisfied by this condition. Say, for example, k equal to one. If I have k equal to one, mod x plus one less than one, mod x less than zero. Yeah, no solution. Now put k is equal to two. Mod x plus one less than two, mod x plus mod x less than minus one. Again, no solution. See this. Got the idea? Yes. So that is a very good question. It's a good question. Instead of asking for solution set, we have asked for the value of some unknown uh, parameter such that this is, uh, equation has no solution. Next question.
the greatest negative number, negative integer saying, uh, satisfying, modulus of x plus 2 and a half plus 1 over 2 is greater than or equal to 4. Again, similar strategy here. So, let's see this. Question number 7. We have modulus of x plus 2 and a half plus half is greater than or equal to 4. x plus 2 and a half plus half is greater than or equal to 4. As usual, you isolate the uh, absolute value expression. So we have x plus 2 and a half greater than or equal to 4 minus half. So modulus of x plus two and a half greater than or equal to this is going to be seven over two. Four minus half is three point five, which is seven over two. Now the same trick. If mod x is greater than or equal to some number seven by two, your x is greater than or equal to seven by two, or your x is less than or equal to minus seven. So instead of x, we have x plus 2 and a half, that's all. So x plus 2, 1 or 2, greater than or equal to 7 by 2, or x plus 2 and a half, less than or equal to minus 7. We have two conditions here. Yeah. And by the way, this 2 and a half is nothing but 5 by 2. Okay. So x plus 5 by 2 is greater than or equal to 7 by 2 or x less than or equal to minus 7 by 2 minus 5 by 2. So your x is greater than or equal to 7 or 2 minus 5 over 2 is 2 or 2. This is minus 12 or 2. So your x is greater than or equal to 1 or your x is less than or equal to minus 1. Minus 6. Your x is greater than or equal to 1 or greater than or equal to 1 or less than or equal to minus 6. A question talks about the greatest negative integer. So if you mark the solution set, the solution set will be 0 here, 1 here, negative 6 here. The solution set looks like this 1 and towards the right side of 1 negative 6 and the right left side of negative 6 so we are asked to find the greatest negative integer so we are looking at negative numbers and the negative numbers included in the solution set are negative 6 negative 7 negative 8 negative 9 these are the negative integers the largest among them is minus 6. Largest among them is negative 6. So negative 6 is the answer. Largest among them is negative 6. So negative 6 is the answer. Yes. So let's go to the next question. The solution set of the inequality modulus of 2x plus 9 greater than or equal to 9. So again, we have similar question here. Modulus of 2x is greater than or equal to 0. Modulus of 2x is greater than or equal to 0. This means that the absolute value of 2 times x is greater than or equal to 0. Which is true for all values of x. You take any value of x, double it, take the absolute value. It is always going to be a non-negative number. So all values of x, all values of x. You take any real number, you double it, take the absolute value, it is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. Take any, neg any number, negative or positive, double it, take the absolute value, it will be always greater than or equal to zero.
Yeah. Next question. Yeah. Again. A thermometer gives temperature reading with an error of at most 2 degrees Celsius. The actual temperature is 39 degrees Celsius. Then which inequality represents the range of temperature that may be shown on the thermometer? Again, similar question. Uh, we have done a similar question in question number, I think problem number one. Okay. Here, we don't have to solve it. We just have to frame that inequality. We have to uh, model that condition mathematically. So a thermometer gives temperature reading. So let the temperature reading be T. And there is an error of at most two degrees. The actual temperature is 39 degrees. Okay. The actual value is 39 degree. The reading on the thermometer is T. And the difference between the reading and the actual value is going to be an error. The error, right? Right? What is that error? Error, error, error values, the actual value minus the, uh, the reading. But you have to take the absolute value, okay? The absolute value. So T minus 39, the absolute value error. It is understood that you have to take the absolute value of the error. So the error can be in both ways. Error can be in both ways. So instead of 39 degree, it could have read 38 degrees. And instead of 39 degree, it could have read say 40.5 degrees. So the error could be on both sides. So for that, you take absolute value. So this is the value, the error value. And it says the error is at most two degrees, at most. At most means the maximum value. The maximum value, the maximum value, the maximum value, the maximum value. So the maximum value of the error is going to be 2. So modulus of 3 minus t minus 39 less than or equal to. I think there is a mistake in your solution. Correct it. I think there is a mistake in your solution. Just correct it. The solution seat, there is a correction. So, idea is very simple. The actual value minus uh, the reading or the other way around. To take both cases, you just take the absolute value. And its maximum value is 2 degrees. The error can be at most 2 degrees. The maximum value of the error is. 2 degrees. Error should be less than or equal to 2 degrees. Error should be less than or equal to 2. So that is why we have less than or equal to. Error can be 2 or less than or equal to. So this is the error. This is the error and that should be 2 or less than 2. That is the idea here. Okay. Now let's go to the last question. The inequality modulus of W minus 42 less than or equal to 7 describe the weights of students in a class of 50 students. This is students. Which statement is not true? The inequality modulus of W minus 42 less than or equal to 7 describe the weights of students in a class of 50 students. Which statement is not true? Not true. So let's note that down. Modulus of W minus 42 is less than or equal to 7. So we have W minus 42 lying between minus 7 and 7. Add 42 everywhere. Add 42 plus 42 plus 42. So we have W lying between 49 and uh, 35. The weights of the students will lie between 35 and 40, 49. 35 and 49. The weights of the students will lie between 35 and 49. Now let's look at the option. 
a student in the above class may weigh 50 kilograms wrong because the weight has to lie between 35 and 49 there are no students in the class whose weight is less than 32 that is true because you know the weight ranges 35 to 49 all of the students weigh not more than 49 that is true they all weigh less than or equal to 49 cannot weigh more than uh, 49 that is also true all the students weigh at least 35 that is also true they have a minimum weight of 35 that is also true so they are asked for the wrong statement so this is the wrong statement cool so far so good so shall i go to the next topic shall i go to the next topic yes next is about functions and specifically, we will be discussing about linear functions, okay? Functions. Suppose you have a set of numbers and you have another set of numbers, okay? I'll just give you the abstract uh, idea first, then, then we'll go to examples, okay? And if you pair these numbers, say, I have... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, say minus 2, 7, 5, 3, 6, 8. Now, if I make a mapping or a pairing between the first set of numbers to the second set of numbers, okay, this is what we call a function. This is an example of a function in which one set of values is mapped to another set of numbers. You have to note two things here. You have to note two things here. First of all, in the first set of numbers, every number is being paired to some number. Okay, nobody sitting idle here. Nobody sitting idle here. Everybody is getting paired. Uh -huh. Everybody is getting paired. That is one thing you should know. Second thing is, now this is, you, this you can also consider as inputs and outputs. Inputs and outputs. Okay. For an input, there is an output. You can consider that that way as well. But for the time being, we are going to consider them as Two sets of numbers this is set a this is another set b okay so every element in the first set is getting paired with some number in the second set and second thing is everybody is pairing to just one number if you take any number here it has only one pair everybody has only one pair one pair So these are the two conditions for this mapping, this pairing, or this relationship to become a function. You understand what I'm saying? You take every element of the first set, it should have a pairing. And it should have only one pairing. So that is the condition. So what about the second set B? In the second set B, there could be ideal people. There could be people who did not get a pairing from set A. That is okay. And there are people, there are people like say 3, 3 has paired with 3 here, 4 has paired with 3 here. That is also fine. Okay. That is also fine. But for the elements in the first set, elements in the first set, Every element should be paired with something in the set, second set B. Also, every element in the first set A should have only one pairing here. Now, if you consider this in terms of an input-output relationship, every element in set A is an input. An 
and has a corresponding unique output. So that is the idea here. You take one, one has an output and its output is minus two. You take two, it has an output and it is seven. It, you take three, it has a unique output, it is three. You take four, four also has an output, it is three. Five has an output, eight. Got it? Now, consider another example. Say I have same numbers, one, two, three, four, five. We have minus two, seven, five, three, six, eight. Okay, consider this pairing. One is paired with minus two, two is paired with seven, three is paired with five, and three. Is this relationship a function? Is this relationship a function? Is this relationship a function? Is this mapping from one set of numbers to another set of numbers? Is this a function? Did it satisfy the conditions I just described before? Is this a function? Please let me know. This is a very important idea, okay? Uh, I, I'm sure you would have seen this in school, but uh, you have to really understand what is happening here. Is this a function? Is this a function? Can somebody tell me? Is this mapping given here? Is this a function? Just give me a yes or no. Others? Others? No. Why? Because? Why? Why? Yes, three has two outputs. Three has two outputs. Okay, it, every element in first set has only a unique output in the case of a function. Okay, for every input, there is only a unique output. There is only one output. There is only one output. For every input, there is only one output. In the previous case, see this? In this previous case, see this. Three was pairing to only one number. Four was also pairing to only one number. But in this case, in this case, three is pairing to two numbers. Uh, that is not possible. That's not possible. Got it? Got it? Got the idea? Others? Now, what about uh, this thing? Take another example. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And minus 2, 7, 5, 3, 6, 8. Another, another mapping. I'm going to show you another mapping. Tell me what's wrong about this. Is this a function? Is this a function?
Is this a function? Is this a function? Please tell me, let me know. Is the relationship shown here, the mapping or the pairing that I've shown here, is this a function? That's my question. Please, 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 please let me know. Just give me a yes or no. What do you think about this? Are you with me? Hello? Are you with me? No, it's not a function. Why? Because I told you, nobody is sitting idle. Here, 5 has no pair. Uh -huh. That's not possible. That should not happen. Okay. So this is not a function. This is not a function. Got it? All right, got it. Yes. So if I consider say some P persons, some persons and some say some chairs, say some person one, Person two, person three, person four. Some chair one, chair two, chair three, chair four. Another example, okay. Now, if, if I take a relationship, if I take a pairing between these persons and chairs, so this person is going and sitting on C1, this person is sitting in C3, this person is sitting in C2, this person is sitting here. So this is an example for a function. This is a function. Hope this is clear. Person P1 has occupied chair C1. Uh, C1. P2 has occupied chair C3. P3 has occupied chair C2. P4 has occupied chair C4. Okay. Let's say there is one more chair. Okay. There is... C2 here, there are C3, there are C4. And there are C5. There are some empty chairs. Is that a problem? There are some empty pro chairs. Is that a problem? No. No. The chairs can be empty. The chairs can be empty. The chairs can be empty. Remember this as a shortcut. Remember this. The chairs can be empty. There is no problem. This can be a function. This is a function. The chairs can be empty. No problem at all. Okay. Now, is, the, is, is this a possible case? P1. P2, P3, P4, and C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. P1 is sitting here. P2 is sitting here. P3 is sitting here. 
Is this a function? No, this is not a function because see, persons cannot be standing. They should be paired. They should be, they should go and sit somewhere. Okay. Here, this is okay. Chairs can be empty. No problem. Persons cannot be standing. So this is not a function. This is not a function. Because there, are, there is some person who is standing. It is not paired with any chair. Okay. So that's not a function. Now what happens if one person goes and occupies more than one chair? P1, P2, P3, P4. C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. A person goes and occupies two chairs. Is this a function? Is this a function? Is this a function? No, 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 no. As I mentioned before, do not get confused. One element here cannot pair with two elements, more than one element. It should pair with exactly one element. Okay, persons cannot be standing. I mentioned in the previous case. Similarly, one person cannot sit in two chairs. Or more than one chair. One person cannot sit in more than one chair. This is not a function. This is not a function. Okay, got it? This is not a function. This is okay, tell me, tell me. This is not a function because it's like uh, P2 is going and sitting in two chairs. Or you can say P2 is having two outputs, C2 and C3. You can think that way. It's not possible. Okay. In a function, that is not allowed. Another example is say P1, P2, P3, P4. C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. Is this a function? Is this a function? Both P1 and P2 are sitting in C1. Is that a function? Everyone, everyone, is this a function? Is this a function? Is this a function? Is this a function? Tell me. No, look at, look at our conditions. Our conditions were every element in the first set should be paired with one element here. And it should be paired with exactly one element here. Okay. So that condition is being satisfied. Okay. P1 has a pair. 
and P1 has only one pair. P2 has a pair. P2 has only one pair. P3 has a pair, and there's only one pair. P4 has a pair, and there's only one pair. So it is okay. Like in this uh, chair and person's analogy, in this analogy, it is okay that uh, uh, sharing a seat is okay. Sharing a seat is okay. Okay, sharing a chair is okay. So, so consider this. I have a set of people. I have a set of chairs. You are mapping persons to chairs. So, what what have we seen this in this analogy? In this analogy, we have seen that every person should be sitting. Nobody should be standing. Every person should be mapped to a chair. That is one condition. Second condition is. Every person should go and sit in only one chair. A person cannot occupy more than one chair. A person cannot occupy more than one chair. These are the two conditions. What are the two conditions? Everybody should be sitting and one should not occupy more than one chair. These are the two conditions. Is this okay? Is this okay? I mean, this analogy... Everybody should be sitting. Nobody should be standing. Okay. Second thing is, everybody should, should be sitting in just one chair. Everybody should be sitting in just one chair. They cannot be occupying more than one chair. These are the two conditions for this relationship, this mapping, this pairing to be a function. Now, my question is, can chairs be empty? Can chairs be empty? Yes, chairs can be empty. Can a chair be shared between two persons? Two persons are sitting in the same chair. Is that okay? Yes, that is okay. One person should not sit in two chairs. Seat, chairs can be shared. Seats can be shared. Seats can be empty. Okay, but persons cannot be standing. And persons go cannot go and occupy two seats. That is the idea. Am I right? Am, uh, this is this this is fine for you, right? This analogy is this okay for you? I, I'll give you one more example. You can think of a function as a relationship between some children and some persons. And you're considering, see, you're considering two sets of children and persons. Children and persons. Okay. And I'm 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 map mapping, I'm making a pairing between, I'm making a pairing between children and their uh, father, child to father relationship. So I have child one here. There is P1, P2, P3, P4. Child two, child three, child four. Okay. Child one has this guy as the father. These two children have the same father, P2. C4 has this person as the father. Now, this is a function. You can think of this as a function because, you know, every child has a father. Every child has a father and every child has only one father. Okay. Yes. But it is okay that uh, two children have the same father and there are persons without kids. That is also fine. It's clear now. It's much clear now. So you can think of an analogy between persons and chairs, persons and seats. Or you can think of an analogy between children and persons to understand what I'm saying. Okay. In the, in the analogy I gave uh, between chairs and persons, sorry, persons and chairs, persons and chairs. Okay. What was the condition? 
what is the condition everybody should be should be sitting nobody should be standing one person cannot go and occupy two chairs two seats but seats could be empty no problem with that and a seat could be shared between two persons no problem for that similarly you can consider child to father relationship child to father relationship okay every child has a father also every child has only one father okay there are persons in the second set without a kid and there are persons in the second set with two kids got it so this is what we call a function and the first set is what we call a domain and second set is what we call a codomain have you heard of this terms domain and codomain the first set is called domain the second set is called codomain okay just one more minute and then we'll wind up domain and codomain is this okay these terms have you heard of these terms before domain and codomain domain and codomain have you heard of these terms before domain and codomain no if if, if it's a no no problem just note it down the first set is called the domain the second set is called codomain and there is one more term it's called range what is range in this case p1 p2 p3 has a pairing okay so these are called range the set of p1 p2 p3 is what we call a range so the entire second set is called codomain but range is what so in this case uh, uh, say in this case the occupied chairs the occupied chairs form the range the occupied chairs form the range there could be an unoccupied chair so that doesn't form the, uh, the that doesn't uh, uh, form a uh, that, that that that's not a part of the range okay the range is different from codomain the entire second set is called the codomain but the one that is being paired with the elements of the domain is what we call range what is uh, uh, the set of all uh, values in the second set that is being paired with some element in the domain is what is called a range so the three terms domain the first set is called domain the second set is set is called codomain and I, as i said in the codomain there could be some elements that are mapped and there could be some elements which are sitting idle okay the one the elements which are mapped with elements in domain form a set what is we uh, set we call as range got it the three terms okay we'll discuss this uh, in more detail we'll see examples uh, then uh, you will have a better picture okay uh, we have run out of time in the next class i'll discuss uh, i some problems so that will give you better idea okay see you in the next class